Welcome to Sunshine Art and Drawing. Today I'm going to be doing this diamond painting. It is a diamond art painting that I found at a discount store. I think it was about five to ten dollars. Can't quite remember. I got a few things on that day and their receipts aren't very ordered so you can't really tell. It just says prices. So um, here's the instructions on the back and I will pop a photo in just to show you what they are if you'd like to know. But here are all of the lovely beads and the design that we're working on. Now I thought I would do this because it's something I see commonly and it's that the design itself is in like it's rolled up or it's folded up and it's all wrinkled so it's going to make it difficult to do. But before I do that let's open these pack of beads and see what we've got. Now these are little faceted pieces of plastic. I think they're made of plastic resin and by faceted it means they're cut like a diamond. They've got tiny little cuts in them that make them catch the light. And in this set you get a whole bunch of colours. There's 21 colours in total and there's like all the way from a very dark green all the way to the like yellows and blues and then a white one at the end. Some lovely greens, lots of bright colours. Looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. Now I like the diamond paintings where you get a lot of colours. It just keeps it interesting. You're not doing the same colour over and over which is always fun. So let's wrap those up because we're going to be sorting those in a minute and have a look at what you get for tools. I'm just surprised at how many there are. Like even it's, it was such a cheap set and um, being able to find it in a store was really strange to me. Like normally there's something you get off of like eBay. Um, but yeah, let's open this up and have a look and see what tools you get. So you get the standard little pink tool that just rolled away. Bye bye. And you also get a little tray and lots of plastic and a lot of these little plastic Ziploc bags. And the little sticky pad of the glue for the tool and your little tray. It's kind of standard and they look identical to the ones that you get online. So we're not going to worry too much about that. Let's have a look at these little bags. Now you get a whole, whole bunch of them. Looks like there's a whole handful of them which should be good. So I don't know why I did that. It was just fun. They were just all silky. It was really strange. <laughs> so you're going to need a pen. You're going to need the little tray. You're also going to need to flatten all of this out. So maybe we're getting ahead of ourselves. Let's put that stuff to the side and we'll get started on flattening out our lovely design. So as you can see, it's wrinkled at the bottom here. It's also very wrinkled across it just because it was curled up in a package. So you can try and push it down, flatten it out. You also can put it under some heavy books for a few days. But I found the easiest way to flatten it out real quickly is to grab a hairdryer. Now flip it on its back. You don't want to do this on the front. You'll probably melt the glue. Put your hairdryer on its hottest setting. What we're essentially doing is ironing out the crinkles. So put it on its hottest setting, put it on low fan speed. It doesn't have to be super fast. Low fan speed will probably work. And click it on and then point it maybe about an inch away from the design just so it doesn't get too hot and keep it moving. So I'm doing a lot of heat right on this really bad wrinkle at the bottom and it's coming straight out. So as you can see, it's starting to flatten out and you'll get rid of the wrinkle pretty quickly. And then do the same thing for the entire back of it. Don't hang it, like don't put the heat on one spot for too long. Because if you do that, you might melt the glue on the other side, which you don't want to do. But just add a little bit of heat across it and you'll feel the fabric getting warm under your fingertips. And that's a good sign to move on to another spot. And just keep adding heat until you get it a lot flatter than it was. You're not going to get every wrinkle out, but you're going to get about 90% of them out this way. And just keep that hairdryer moving and you want to be about an inch to a centimetre away from the fabric. You don't want to be right on it. You could probably use a regular house iron and um, like a normal iron and just put like a tea towel or a sheet over the top and then iron over the top of it would work as well. It's canvas fabric so it's essentially able to be warmed up and when you warm it up you can flatten it out with your fingers like I'm doing here to get rid of that really big wrinkle and then I'm just going to add some heat across the entire thing just to kind of help it flatten out and use your fingers to kind of rub out any of those really deep sort of wrinkles that don't seem to want to come out. And once you've heated the entire thing up all over, 
you'll want to get some nice heavy books and pop some books on top. So I'm just going to grab a couple of colouring in books that I've got here. Before I do that, let's use something and just roll over it a bit. I was going I was going to put some books on it, but I saw this next to me. It's just like a can of like cleaning spray. And because it's nice and round, I'm using it to kind of roll across it to get out some of those wrinkles. And you can rotate it and roll it the other way. And it helps a lot with getting the wrinkles out. You could probably use a rolling pin, but this is just what I had near me. It's just some cleaning spray. And I'm using that, especially on that really wrinkled spot at the bottom, giving it a good sort of roll over. You're trying to straighten out the fabric and it seems to help a lot. Like this is a lot better than it was, but you can also do your usual thing of popping books on top of it and leaving it for a day or so, and that will flatten it out as well. Because it's kind of a fabric, with glue on top of it, as you can see with the um, layer of plastic over the top that protects the glue. You just don't want to get it too hot that that glue melts. That's what you just got to be a bit careful of. So keep an eye on the heat and just make sure you don't make it too hot and allow it to cool down completely. And I'm deciding where I'm going to cut it to cut the plastic because the plastic is one full sheet and if you pull it off with the entire thing, you're going to have nowhere to lean your hand while you're working. So you'll end up continually peeling your hand off of the work until you get some of the little bead parts down. So I've just started a little bit of a cut there and because it's plastic it tears pretty easy and you just pull it all the way across and I'm going to do one diagonal kind of cut across the design itself, kind of splitting it in half between the white peacock and the colourful peacock. And let's pop this down. You just line the corner up with the corner at the bottom and you should be able to get it to lay down pretty accurately. Might take a couple of goes to get it nice and neat, but you just pop that down and you can use it to sort of open up the space that you're gonna work on just by angling the two pieces together. Like I have here, there's a bit of space that I can work on there and that's all ready to go. So we're gonna pop this to the side. I'm just checking that I've lined this up properly and it's actually covering everything. So you just line up the bottom corner it's static to my hand but yeah you just line up that bottom corner with the corner of the artwork and then lay it back down and then it's usually pretty straight it's not a hundred percent straight but it'll do for now it's really to stop dirt from getting into the design itself otherwise little beads won't stick so any dust and stuff like that will stop the beads from sticking properly so next step grab yourself some books i'm just trying to find some of my books to the side here here I found just a handful of colouring books. I'm going to pop them on top. They seem nice and heavy. And you can spread them out a little bit and just pop them all on top of the work itself. And then pop that over to the side because we're going to start on ordering the beads. Now I'm going to speed this part up because this takes a while. You're going to maybe need to put about half an hour into just working on this. So here you just need a sharpie. You'll write the number on each one if you can get a pen that works. I was having so much trouble finding a pen that just worked on this plastic. My Sharpie just didn't want to work. I found another Sharpie in the end and that's probably the best thing I recommend. Just like a permanent Sharpie marker works perfectly for this kind of thing. And you just want to write the letter of the corresponding colour on the outside of the bag and then pour all the little beads in the bag. This just saves you so much time later. You don't want to be doing this as you grab each colour. It's really, really annoying. It's also handy if you do this before you start, just in case you miss some colours, you can easily just open the bag, grab out a few beads, and you're not trying to fiddle with like little packets that are, you know, cut open and full, like flowing everywhere. And it just kind of becomes a bit rhythmic. You just put each of the colours in and making sure you label them properly. And I would like to make up things like I'll say it's like O for orange and A for Appalachian blue and E for eggshell blue and X for x-ray blue technician suit. And the one thing that annoys me the most about this is that there were 20 bags and 21 colours. So the white just had to be left in its packet. So I did the white first just so I could get it out of the way. And essentially this is all you do. You just take the little beads with the tool and you place them down on the corresponding colour. You can use like a ruler if you want to make sure they're straight, but to be honest, I don't mind if they're a little bit off because 
You can't really see it unless you get really close up, and these are supposed to be viewed from a distance. So they're kind of um, almost like pixel art in the way that you, if you view it from a distance, you can see the design really well. But if you come up close, you'll start to see where it kind of breaks down into pixels. I just find it really fun. It's very, very relaxing. You kind of just get a rhythm going and you just put all the little pieces down, pop some music on, enjoy yourself, that sort of thing. So that's exactly what I'm going to do now. I'm going to pop some music on so you can enjoy the process right to the end. And then at the end, I'll show you it completed with all the sides trimmed off and I'll get nice light and put some light on it so you can see the sparkles really well. It kind of doesn't pick them up as well on camera, but if I do use some like little LED light that I have, I can get it to really sparkle. So I hope you guys look forward to that. I'll see you at the end of the video.
cuts a few little pieces of this kind of beigey grey colour down and finishing off the design. It took me about three days working on this one for a couple of hours each time. These designs are not something that you can do in an afternoon. They're definitely um, something that you might need to um, take a couple of days to do. It's probably not healthy to sit for six hours straight doing this because it will hurt your arm and it will also hurt your back leaning over. So here, as you can see, as I'm putting the pieces down, I'm putting some pressure on them and you can use a piece of paper as well if your hands are a bit sticky and stand up and really put some pressure, like almost your whole body weight, onto the artwork with your hands. The reason I'm doing this is to push, make sure every single bead is pushed firmly into the glue layer. And when you do that, it makes it a bit more permanent. The little pieces don't pop off and they stay nice and neat. So that's all pushed together. And let's have a look at it a bit more close up. So you'll be able to see that there's a bit of shine to it, but you can't really see the glitteriness. And that's more because um, I don't have the proper light on at the moment. But let's have a bit of a look and I'll just clean up the rest of these little beady sort of things and we'll pop them all to the side. And it's kind of like one of those things where you kind of feel really, really good at the end of it. You've completed something quite sort of long and it took a really long time, but it's sort of that nice bit of I've finished it, it's done, it's complete sort of feeling. So I felt really good after finishing this one. It was kind of like a long haul, there was a lot of the same colour. The next step you'll want to do is to use a pair of scissors and just very carefully trim off that excess. So I'm just using just a pair of ordinary scissors, it's kind of like a fabric so it cuts pretty easily. And just cut as close as you can to that edge, you might not be able to cut neatly along it. But don't worry if it's a little bit messed up, you can fix it afterwards. But you want to take off all these side edges and that just makes it look more cohesive and you don't have this weird border. And then you can either put it in a frame or you can put it you know, behind some glass or you can even, you could probably sew it onto a t-shirt. The fabric is thin enough that you would be able to do that. Like if you made a little one, that'd be kind of cool actually. I don't know how it would survive in the wash, but it would be kind of nice or like on a bag or something like that it would look really cool but I do like how it's kind of flexible so you could put it on something like a backpack or you could um, make it into something like a, a pencil case the little pieces may not stay perfectly in space but like in place but you could probably put something over the top of it like um, I'm trying to think what would work well Maybe like a, a spray coating, like a varnish, help them stay down. Or maybe coat the entire top in some clear resin and that would probably make it stay. There's lots of things you could do to kind of make it more permanent, but most people will put them like in a frame behind glass. And here I'm just trying to finish off this little cut there. There's a few beads there, so I'm just trying very hard not to knock them off. But there you go, and just push them back on. <laughs> just a couple over the edge and that is complete let me get these scraps out of the way and I'll get my light and then you'll be able to see all the sparkle sparkles and they look really nice I'm pretty happy with this I do love a good peacock picture they always look really beautiful to me and we'll get out little it's just like a little torch that I use and we'll have a look and see what it looks with the sparkles so this little torch has just got LED lights and for some reason LED lights pick up the glitteriness a bit more. The camera still struggles because it's it's something that's difficult for the camera to pick up but it's way more vivid in real life. So if you have been seeing, seeing videos of these and wondering what the big deal is, it's because they glitter. They have this really pretty glitteriness to them and as you walk past every little facet catches the light and it's just really pretty. And I think that's why people like them a lot. I really enjoyed this one. I hope you guys have a sunshiny day and I will see you next week. Bye.